Hey everyone, this is Maregal Benya Kov. In today's uh, lesson or video, I just want to talk about Pesach or Passover and how to observe it according to the biblical text. And also I want to talk about the history of it uh, according to the biblical text. And so, because there's a lot of people out there, especially wanting to learn about uh, Passover and the Jewish feasts, uh, wanting to know how to observe it and uh, are just kind of interested in, in that, especially from the Christian world. So, um, plus, I want to delve into some of uh, the New Testament a little bit and how the three Gospels contradict the Gospel of John, or I should say John contradicts the other three when it comes to Passover and, or the Last Supper. So I want to talk about that. Stay tuned. But before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. That helps the channel out. And uh, all right. And I think that's good enough for now. So please enjoy the program. Hey, guys. This is my regal, Ben Yaakov. I just wanted to say this because Passover or Pesach is coming. And uh, it's approaching. Anyway, the first day of Aviv happened on March 23rd. Uh, that is the daytime period, but it started on the 22nd at sunset. Anyway, but as far as numbers go, as far as the calendar, just, you know, uh, just use March 23rd. So, Passover, a lot of people uh, don't realize this of the Christian world, Western world. They actually think that when Passover comes, they put blood on the doorpost. And uh, however, when they give the Passover lamb, you know, to eat it that evening, and they, a lot of people just don't know the rituals and stuff. But anyway, uh, Passover, the original Passover, is the only one that you put the blood on the doorpost and things like that. Other, uh, the following years is strictly um the, the following years is strictly uh going to the temple you have to go to the temple in jerusalem three times a year and it is illegal uh in the biblical mindset uh to sacrifice a passover meal um outside of jerusalem it has to be done at the temple mount and so that's why three times a year, three times a year, we uh, go up to Jerusalem back in the day and to celebrate the uh, Passover slash the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then seven weeks later, uh, the Feast of Pentecost or Shavuot. Then in the fall, we celebrate the uh, uh, Feast of Ingathering, or uh, the Feast of Harvest, or better yet, as the Tabernacle Feast. So, anyway, uh, Ingathering might be a little off there, I can't, can't remember, but it's basically the old Harvest Festival, the latter end of the year. So, anyway, these are the three times uh, we are commanded to go to Jerusalem. And so, what I didn't say is, uh, the first original Passover, uh, the people in Egypt, according to the legend, put blood on the doorpost. The following years, you don't do that at all. And, uh, but it's st strictly a memorial offering of what the Lord did for you in Egypt. So, you do things like for your uh, descendants to learn what we went through in Egypt. So, you wear basically a toga. And it has to have tassels because now you're commanded uh, to have, you know, you got to remember back in the day when a, a piece of cloth came off the shuttle loom, uh, it was a four-corner garment. You know, it's basically a, uh, a rectangle. And so you're commanded to have tassels on the four corners of your garments and add a thread of, you know, a cord of blue to it. You know, Orthodox folks uh, don't add... The thread of blue or cord of blue because they reason with themselves through the oral tradition oh we don't know what type of blue it is and it came from a snail in the Mediterranean well if you if you're going to go by that you have to revert back to when the commandment was given on Mount Sinai and there was no ocean around and so 
The blue, according to the context, came from a bean, an indigo bean, and so you got the blue dye from that. That's from uh, snail blood, basically, and so which would render it unkosher anyway. And you cannot bring, you know, a guy remember the tabernacle, according to the legend, had blue curtains and things like that. And the high priest had uh, uh, blue mixed in his garments. So you cannot have an unkosher animal on holy things. So it has to be an indigo bean, and uh, and that would make more sense in a desert facility, you know. And uh, not going all the way ocean. We gotta obey the commandments. You you don't even read about that anywhere. So um, anyway, so you put on a toga, you gird it like you're gonna take off, go running, you know, with your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you basically stand. You could stand up. I mean, you can sit down, but uh, to act more like you're in doing it in haste, like you're in a rush to eat it, is uh, you eat it fast as you can with lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. It could be mustard or horseradish, something like that, and you can basically make a burrito, like a soft taco, of lamb meat and. Uh, Lamb meat, bitter herbs, and the tortilla type thing would be the unleavened bread. And uh, don't buy into the rabbinic stuff. As be cooked before 18 minutes. No, I ain't buying it. Anyway. Uh, but you also have to get rid of all yeast type stuff, you know, before uh, the, uh, the 14th even gets, gets to be around. So by the 13th... Uh, it has to be, you know, on the, by the 13th or before, uh, you have to get rid of all cereals and grains that have yeast in it and just plain yeast, you know, uh, fermented dough flour, you know, because some people make bread like I used to. You just take a wad of dough and let it ferment with water and it gets all nasty and stinks and stuff. Well, that, that's basically how dough rise. And so you have to get rid of that, like stuff like corn flakes and... Uh, whatever like um, crackers that might be they have made with yeast and things like that so anyway so yeah do not um, do not uh, you know uh, put blood on the doorpost and if you want to be real strict uh, you're not allowed to even sacrifice a Passover lamb uh, now you can have lamb as long as it's not Passover. You could do a mock one, you know, like if you're going to have, you know, like if you're a hunter or a farmer and you could do a mock one. If you're just going to, you know, take a one of your livestock uh, lamb and, or goat and you want him for dinner with a great feast you know, with your friends, you can imitate one. But you cannot say this is the Passover with the intent of that because you'd be sinning and biblically, that is. And, uh, but... Anyway, this is kind of like my I'm redesign my studio in the background here. Anyway, um, what else? So you you back in the day you sacrifice it in the evening of the 14th day of Aviv, or what the I don't like using Nisan. Nisan is Babylonian month name, and I don't like adopting pagan cultures, you know, heathen cultures. So Aviv or Abib, which you see in a you know, uh, JPS ver English version or uh, King James or a lot of English translations. Anyway, um, you kill the lamb in the evening of the 14th and then you cook it. And then, as you may not know, our 24 hour period starts right after sundown. So after sundown, you eat the Passover lamb, like how I said it. Uh, with uh, bitter herbs and unleavened bread, with the toga on, your loins girded, and a staff in your hand, and you eat it in haste. So this is the first day, uh, first 24-hour period of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Well, that first 24-hour period is a special type of Sabbath. Not like the weekly regular Sabbath, but you're not allowed to do certain things. You're not allowed to be unclean. You're not, uh, even for Passover, of course, you can't have intercourse with your wife or your spouse i should say you know uh and you can't go to a cemetery you can't do things like that so anyway i just want to throw this out there so the first day like i said it's a kind of a special sabbath no business whatsoever 
uh, has to be done uh, the 14th or before. Uh, uh, but if you go to a to a business place on the 14th, everybody has to be kosher and clean, so it's just better to uh, because if say 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 for example. Uh, a guy goes to a cemetery and you don't know that you're unclean you know for that day you get defiled and um, where that guy he's unclean for seven days so you want to avoid cemeteries you know seven days before Passover begins and so by this like the six don't do not visit a you know a, a deceased friend or family member past the sixth you know, because <clears throat> you want to be clean for Pe Pesach and uh, and for the rest of the feast, for that matter. So, what else? What I want to say um, in the New Testament, there's confusion uh, between three Gospels and the Gospel of John. Now, the Gospel of John, in case for those now, uh, ex-Jewish Orthodox biblical guy only. No uh, messianic and not a Jesus believer, but um, uh, anyway, but I read the New Testament, and there's a contradiction between John's gospel and the other three. And where John's is following more of the epistles of Peter, kind of a, there's no commandments in that whole entire book. Uh, that is Law of Moses commandments, not like love one another like I have loved you. It's not the same as uh, loving your neighbor as yourself. So, uh, you don't have any uh, Mosaic commandments in the uh, book of John. In fact, uh, salvation is obtained by your knowledge of who Jesus is. Where in the God, other three, salvation is obtained by keeping the Torah, the law of Moses. Like one rich kid came up to Jesus, What must I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven or a kingdom of God? And, uh, of course, he says, good teacher. And a lot of people believe Jesus is God, but he, if he is, he just lied to the guy. He goes, why do you call me good? There's no one good but God alone. So that tells you Jesus is not God. And plus, he says, I'm rabbit trailing for a minute, rabbit holing for a minute. But he says, uh, also, he says, um, uh, our Father who art in heaven. You know, uh, and, uh, and he says take this cup from me you know and things like that and there's no trinity you know at all it's just you know jesus if he was you know he's a genuine jewish guy and he just was like any other dude and but anyway he's praying to the l the only god there is and um and so anyway back to what i was saying he says no one is good but god alone so that tells you he's not god he doesn't admit that he's god and if he was he's just lying to this guy but to the to the answer he says if you want to inherit life obey the commandments that's it he doesn't say believe in me he says obey the commandments and so the purpose of the jewish mashiach or messiah is to bring people uh, to uh, bring the Torah to the people and teach them. So when they do that, they become righteous in El's sight and they become righteous and, uh, and holy and therefore they are his. And so, uh, anyway, what I was about to say, the contradiction is, in the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus' Last Supper was the Passover. He eats it you know the the peter and john go sacrifice the lamb and that evening jesus joins them and there he eats a passover okay and then he gets crucified on the next day which is the 15th of aviv the first day of unleavened bread in john's gospel however jesus last supper is not the passover at all it's a regular meal and you see stuff in god john's gospel that you are not allowed to do on Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread like the washing of of the feet and so you don't have that in the other Gospels only in John's and in John's account it was simply a regular meal the next day was actually Passover because when the people the Pharisees took him to Pilate, or the leaders, I should say, the priests and the leaders, took Jesus to Pilate. They didn't go into his palace or his 
like abode because they did not want to be defiled. They didn't want to defile Passover for themselves. It's very clear. And so that tells you Passover didn't occur yet. It's a regular day when, uh, I mean, uh, when he eats the Last Supper. You know, his Last Supper in John was just a regular meal, not Passover. That occurred. So what John is doing you know, and John's gospel is the only one that says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So what John is doing is trying to do a type and shadow effect, making Jesus the Passover, and so he dies on Passover versus the day after like the other three. So the problem is Passover has nothing to do with sin and taking away sin. So it is simply the the all the... Passovers after the original is simply simply a memorial to what the Lord did in Egypt, and and at that time the original one had nothing to do with sin either. It's simply to redeem your firstborn children uh, from uh, uh, you know when you put the blood on the doorpost, it was a sacrifice to redeem the firstborn male of the house, and so because the Egyptians did not know about that their firstborn were wiped out so it has nothing to do with uh, sin whatsoever and so like later years like if we have a firstborn son like i had a first firstborn son uh you have to redeem him with five shekels of silver okay and that's that type of effect so anyway john's account is totally radically different from the other three and the other three are more are authentic to the man of history and uh, where John's is, is totally kind of fabricated in a whole lot of areas so I mean, if you know your homework you should know that to be true all right guys talk to you later and uh, this is the kind of the rules for Passover or Pesach and uh, just thought I'd throw that out there all right talk to you guys later